Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hillsborough County um, Environmental Protection Commission. If you could please uh, join me in standing to pledge of allegiance and invocation provided by our chaplain, Stacy White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, clean water to drink, clean air to breathe, uh, jobs that provide uh, for our families, uh, the industry and agriculture that puts food on our tables. And uh, I just pray that you'll guide this board, our staff and stakeholders uh, as we make decisions this morning that will keep all of those things in uh, delicate balance. Lord, as always, I'm thankful for... Uh, uh, members of our armed forces and our first responders, uh, many of, of, of whom are uh, just engaged in, in uh, uh, un unthinkable situations right now and, and making things right, especially uh, with the fires out in California. So I just pray that you will keep them safe, guide them, and comfort them. Uh, and Lord, finally, I'm just uh, so thankful for uh, two of our colleagues at this dais, uh, Commissioner Al Higginbotham and Commissioner Victor Christ, uh, we saw, uh, we gave Al a, a, a great farewell ceremony uh, uh, recently, and we'll be doing the same for Victor this morning. And just pray that you will uh, guide them in, in uh, the next chapters of their lives, and uh, pray that you will uh, keep them involved and, and that they continue to do great things uh, throughout their lives. I ask for all of these things and, and, and give all of these thanks in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner White. You always do such a wonderful job <clears throat> at being our chaplain. Okay, we have um, some items up front here on the agenda. There are some, are there any changes to the agenda? No, Commissioner. So there are no changes to the agenda. Um, are there any items to be removed from the consent calendar? No, sir. Okay, and we, I see we have public comment, but they're all for the second half of our meeting today, which is the farewell. Um, so we will hold those who have come and filled out a form for public comment to the second half of the meeting that Commissioner Merman will be chairing. We have um, a couple of excused absences here. The first one is Ken Hagen. He wanted it read into the minutes. Please be advised that I have a sick child at home and I will be unable to attend today's EPC board meeting. Please read this reason into, of absence into the record. Thank you. Sincerely, Ken Hagen, District 5. Um, Chairman Miller is also out recuperating from some significant surgery, so he will not be attending today either. Is he on speaker or? No, sir. But we do have quorum. Yes, sir. Okay. First up is the consent calendar. Is there, since there were no changes to the consent calendar? We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will open the board. Commissioner White, is I'm, my screen um, only has request to speak and page. It doesn't okay. have the the voting buttons. Okay. May I have you vote? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried five to zero. Okay. Next um, up is our public hearing. I see that we have none, so there's no public hearing. The regular agenda, Janet, I'm going to turn it over for you to go ahead and carry us through that. Thank you, Commissioner. First up is our EPC Petroleum Program audit reports and our EPC Brownfields and Old Landfill. I'm going to be bringing up Hushang Bustani, who is the director of our Waste Division, to discuss that. For the first time. Good morning, Commissioners. Hushang Bustani, APC staff. This 
This morning we have the pleasure of providing you three program updates. Uh, there's, uh, therefore, your information only, no action is being requested. I will provide you the first two, which are results of two DEP audits related to our petroleum programs. Uh, first, I'll begin with the cleanup program. <clears throat> this is the contract with DEP that we started 31 years ago, in 1987. It's uh, the funding of one and a half million a year. The mission of this program is to clean up, to clean up contaminations caused by old leaking storage tanks of fuel. Uh, we administer the program not only in Hillsborough, but also in Manatee County. Uh, this year alone, we have closed out 64 contaminated sites. Over the life of the program, I think we have closed out in excess of 1,300 contaminated sites. Uh, this year alone, we brought, in, we brought in about $6 million for cleanup operations. We received a uh, <clears throat> quarterly audit about a month ago that we were very pleased with and we wanted to share with you and we're very proud of the staff for doing the work they do, and which culminates in getting very, very positive audits on a consistent basis. I do have the manager and assistant manager of the programs that I would like to recognize, Stephanie Wickham and Andy Murley. Uh, they're here with us. We have a wonderful staff that works very hard, and uh, this program for the 31 years that I've been involved with it, has been one of the top local programs in Florida. Uh, the, the latest audit uh, praises us for the highest productivity compared to other local programs, the least amount of errors. That's one of the measurements, errors in our submittals and our, the work we do. And uh, the time that we take to process projects below the state average. We have a monthly measure where they do evaluate our monthly submittals, our monthly work. And on average in 2018, this program has scored 96.5% in terms of compliance with the contract obligations when all the criteria they use to evaluate local programs. Uh, we have a wonderful team and we're really proud of them. And I, I thank you and your staff for doing a wonderful job. The next contract with DEP is the compliance contract. Now, the cleanup you know, deals with contaminations. Compliance verification inspects the registered facilities, regulated facilities, uh, to make sure that they're operating in, in compliance with regulations to prevent future leakage and contamination. And that's a contract that we've had for 30 years, since 1988. And on a consistent basis, this program has scored above 90. Uh, <clears throat> we also, you know, administer this program in Hillsborough and Manatee County through a subcontract with Manatee. Uh, our latest audit came in about two months ago, and we scored 93 out of 100. Uh, the final comment on the audit is that Overall, the county continues to do a very good job meeting the contract requirements. Uh, and again, equally, we're, uh, we're proud of, of the team in compliance for doing a great job. Uh, I will be glad to answer your questions if you have any. Otherwise, I will introduce our next presenter. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, as usual, you've given a very thorough. Oh, we do have one. <laughs> Commissioner Pat. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Merman, then Commissioner Kemp. I'm getting used to this new sure. system. Uh, I, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, it sounds like you're doing great, great work, and I was just so impressed by the presentation. Um, and uh, thank you to the staff also. I know you didn't stand. We should have cheered. <laughs> for your great work so um, I'm just really impressed to see um, the work that you've done and uh, and to see that the program is doing so well thank you we're very fortunate to have a great staff 
Um, Hu Shang, you're, you're like a supreme leader, and I really, I really applaud you. Um, this you. is, this cleanup stuff is really important. A contaminated sites, it's important for economic development. It's important for jobs. Um, it's just important to the health of our community. Um, we don't want contamination. So I really applaud you and the staff. Thank you all for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, <clears throat> Allison Amram is our Brownfields coordinator, and she's going to come up and give you an update on the two redevelopment-related programs, namely the old landfill programs, which is a very unique program in Hillsborough County, and the Brownfields program that she coordinates for us. So without further ado, I invite Allison to come up. Good morning. My name is Allison Amram, and I'm the Brownfields coordinator with Hillsborough County's EPC. And today we'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about our two landfill, two, our, two land redevelopment programs. We have the old landfill redevelopment program and the Brownfields program, which are both designed to promote redevelopment, to assist developers with um, overcoming the environmental concerns on the site, and to protect the environment. So today what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about those programs briefly, and then show you some examples and the impacts they have on our community. Why is redevelopment so important now? Well, we have a lot of population coming to Florida, coming to Tampa Bay, and with that increased population, we have more needs, more homes, schools, more buildings. And a developer can either go far away from the community hub and develop an undeveloped lands, or they can redevelop because most of our prime locations have been already developed. So they look for what can suit their needs and repurpose it. So when you have more demands for land, the property values go up, and overcoming these environmental hurdles for development, are um, they're now financially viable. The old landfill program was started in 1988. It's the only program of its kind in the state, and it's very important in Hillsborough County because we have 176 old landfills. So what's an old landfill? It's a place where solid waste was buried before there were any permits, any regulations, and we have many of them in the county. So the land, old landfill program makes sure that the environmental uh, redevelopment of these areas is sound, that public health and safety is protected from things like landfill gas, and that um, future users of the land will understand what's going on with the land, with pro and so there may be property restrictions or um, notifications on deeds. The Brownfields program is a redevelopment program that will take any contaminated site, landfill or otherwise, as long as the property owner didn't cause the contamination. It's an EPA program started in 1995, and EPC was delegated authority to run the program in 2004. This is a cleanup program. If you have environmental contamination, you must clean it up. So it takes a lot longer, takes more money, and to help offset this, the Brownfields program has financial incentives, and also it has liability protection for the property owner that will pass through successive property owners. Through both of these programs, EPC has redeveloped 115 sites since 1988. Our first site that I want to show you is an old landfill redevelopment in the West Shore area. This property is on, it fronts onto Cypress Street. As you can see, Every property around it is developed. The reason this was the, the last property to be developed is because it had that environmental hurdle of working through the old landfill concerns, and that's something that EPC does well through the old landfill redevelopment program. It's also a, a good example of infill development. And it was redeveloped in the last two years to be the next core Women's Care of Florida Center. It's an ambulatory surgery imaging doctor's center and the financial impact it's had on the property values is great. The property value increased $7.4 million um, after the redevelopment. So it, redevelopment to, is economically viable. The next site is up near Citrus Park and Carrollwood, sort of where they come together near the veterans. And this is the Tiverton Homes. Again, it was one of the last parcels available for development because it had that old landfill stigma. It was the first 
property that was redeveloped as single family homes through this program and all the solid waste was removed, all the contamination removed below all the properties so each homeowner has a clean parcel. These homes now sell for between $230,000 and $340,000 and the overall property value change with these lovely houses is $5.7 million. The Brownfields program is, like I said, for any, any property where the property owner didn't, have, um, didn't cause the contamination. And we have a bunch of them along the river. This is the Hillsborough River, north of 275, and there are four different brownfield sites. Um, historically, as a city grows, your rivers are industrial. You bring in raw goods, you manufacture on the, on the river banks, and then you ship out your finished product. But as the city matures and your population grows, people want to live along the river to, and use it for recreation too. So I want to talk about the red corner up there on the bend of the river. That's the Tampa Armature Works, and it's a brownfield site. It started off, it was, uh, the building was built in around 1910, 1911 as a streetcar barn for the Tico trolley. And when, um, when cars became more popular, they did away with the streetcar and it was redeveloped. It turned into the Tampa Armature Works where they made motors and generators for the phosphate industry. And then for many years it was abandoned. And the Brownfields Redevelopment Program is very keen on finding abandoned or very underutilized properties. And this was one. In the last two years, it's been redeveloped into a large event space where you can have weddings or other large community events there's a market inside with small shops, eateries, you can get drinks, and it also has this public space out front where people can sit and enjoy the river, and it's being connected to our river walk for City of Tampa right now. In the last several years, it's been apparent that the Brownfields program can be added on to the old landfill redevelopment problem program, <laughs> and yeah, that was good, um, and it brings with it the financial incentives and the liability protection, which are so valuable for developers. And one of our projects that has both these programs working together is the former Tampa High Li. Before it was the High Li, it was an old landfill. And when they took the High Li down, the property was vacant for several years. But it's a great location. This is the, the curls you see at the top of the picture are the, the exit ramps for the crosstown, and it's just south of Gandy. So you can easily reach St. Petersburg or Tampa from this location, and a developer saw it and planned apartments and townhomes to go in the, the High Life site. It's called the Cortana development. There are townhomes in the front and apartments in the back, and this is being redeveloped currently. The process is still under construction, and the Brownfields investigation is ongoing. This is an old landfill and brownfield redevelopment in the West Shore area. It's just south of International Mall. And again, it's uh, a parcel with an old landfill that you have to deal with that waste before you can make a, a viable property use. They redeveloped it to apartments. They're very upscale apartments. And they're in a very desirable location there near International Mall and the property value here has increased more than $37 million. So as you can see, the, the property impacts um, are quite big with these cleanup programs. You've cleaned up the land, you've <coughs> repurposed it to a higher and better use, and the projects that we talked about in this presentation are up at the top, and there's some other brownfields projects you might have heard of um, before that are at the bottom. The IKEA project, Avion Park, which is hotels and medical south of the airport, and the Varela Apartments also in, um, in the West Shore area. But there's more to redevelopment than just property values. And in summary, I want to look at this site, the Waterworks Park, and uh, I want to give kudos to the folks who redeveloped the uh, Ulele restaurant. This is, was originally the pump house building for Tam the city of Tampa's first public water supply. And they preserve the heritage and the culture, and they actually teach you a little bit about the history in the building. And the Tampa Armature Works did the same. So when you redevelop, you get a chance to preserve your history. 
Um, as a geologist and working with the EPC, I like the environmental cleanup. You know, there was a fleet maintenance there at the Waterworks Park that had some environmental impacts. Those have been cleaned up, and uh, it's a great benefit to all. Redevelopment also creates jobs, and it, provide, it prevents urban sprawl by redeveloping inside the core and reusing your infrastructure, your streets and your sewers and all that. And it also can provide a place for recreation. This is an aerial of the Waterworks Park. And it is wonderful, because so many people now want to live in downtown Tampa. They work in downtown Tampa. And the River Walk is connecting them with this great Riverside Park just north of downtown. And there's an intangible value to a community meeting place where neighbors get to know each other, where ideas are exchanged, and people can enjoy each other in a relaxed mode. And often sites like this are a catalyst for change. People want to live nearby. They want to work nearby. And uh, that's pretty much the goal of redevelopment, is to bring people to a place where they want to be and repurpose a site for a higher and better use. So thank you all for your time. I appreciate it today. If you all have any questions, I can take them now. We have one, Commissioner Kemp. I am totally fascinated and learned so much. Well, and, good. Um, thank you. I just, um, what I'd uh, like to understand a little bit more mm -hmm. is exactly what the EPC's role is, like identifying the sites and, and when they remediate the sites, is it typically, I mean, I, I would imagine each site is different, but is it typically uh, taking the top soil? Um, what, can, can you speak to those sure. things a little? Sure. And they're a little bit different in the different programs. The old landfill program recognizes that the owner didn't uh, put the solid waste there and that it was a, the management practice of the time. So the redevelopment focuses environmentally on not making things worse. So they take an environmental snapshot of the soil and groundwater. They make sure the solid waste is, is handled in an appropriate manner and that stormwater ponds are put in an area where they won't can, you know, infiltrate through the trash and make a problem worse. The Brownfields program is a cleanup program. So they assess any contamination that originates on their property, and they have to follow that and see if they've impacted other properties, and then they have to clean it up. And the cleanup is generally um, removing the source and then monitoring residual contamination, but making sure that the public's protected from it. And that would be, you know, making sure the top two feet of soils is clean soil or that there's a, an impermeable cover, which could be a parking lot that protects rain infiltration through something that might leach out into the groundwater and cause a problem. So, and then if, th if there is something like an impermeable cover that's left on site, then there's an institutional control that follows the property so that a successive property owner will know that there's something there and there's a reason that this is in the location it is, but if you want to move it, see EPC. And um, the other part of your question was how do we find these sites? Um, or, or do you identify them and, and I'd also like to understand the financing, like how that works in terms of the cleanup. Is that state dollars, federal dollars, a mix, and, and or property tax uh, breaks, or how does that work? Okay. Um, so we have identified 176 old landfills, and we keep tabs of them. We note when there's a sale and a letter goes out from EPC to the new property owner. So we keep track of them that way. We also do annual inspections. And uh, for the Brownfields program, any site that has the potential of contamination, the developer will come to you all as the county commissioners and get an area designation, and that will have an economic development review by Hillsborough County Economic Development that says, yes, this is a great use of what we're going to do. It fits with our county plan. And then the EPC's role then becomes a contractual role between the property owner and EPC to do a voluntary cleanup that follows the rules of Florida. Thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioner Merman? Just real quick, Brownfields, I mean, I really spearheaded that in the House with Senator Lavalla when I was in the legislature because I saw so much benefit. And I see communities really thrive on these properties that really would just be still be sitting there. Uh, contaminated right um, so I think it was a great investment for the state to really get involved in that and, and help with the cleanup so I'm just glad that you know and that's I think the value of the EPC is that you're able to really go and 
monitor these areas where other communities, they kind of have to wait till a developer or something brings it to, I guess, their county government or, or take it to the state. So we really have a really good set of eyes on this that um, I think is helping our community quite a bit. So I applaud you all. Thank you. Well, thank you. And um, the part about the incentives, um, those are, um, they come from a variety of sources. There are um, federal grants that can be used for redevelopment. There are state tax credits that can be obtained. Um, there are job creation bonuses. And then there are also local incentives that are offered by the different communities. So there are a variety of sources. All right. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. OK, Janet. Thank you, Allison. That was a great presentation. Um, Mr. Bustani, did you have anything else to say? I saw you stand up. You're good. OK. <laughs> Thank you to our supreme leader and all of his staff. I saw that um, Stephanie Wickham and Andrea Murley got up. The, they were kind of shy, but they went back to work. And I want to thank them. They do a great and amazing job. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Marotti for morning, item two. Good morning, Commissioners. This is the time of year that you uh, perform the annual performance evaluation for the executive director. Recall that in Ms. Doherty's employment agreement, uh, it requires a commission to do an evaluation every October or as soon as possible thereafter. Uh, at our commission meeting in September, Rick Schantz passed out the scoring sheets that contain metrics that the commission has agreed to perform the evaluation upon. Ms. Doherty then delivered a self-evaluation packet that has lots of uh, milestones and accomplishments for the past year. Each commissioner individually scored the, on the scoring sheets, turned them into us. We tabulated them and put them all in one chart, which is a very back of your packet, the last page. I have copies if anyone needs one. And the, that chart, uh, the tabulation was that her final score was a 4.9 out of 5. We really appreciate you turning around those scores so quickly so we can get them on the agenda. And with that, unless there's any questions, just turn it over to you to wrap up the uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, do we have any, before I pass the gavel to Commissioner Merman and make a motion, do we have any discussion? We do, Commissioner Merman and then Commissioner White. No, I, you didn't clear me out after the Brownfield oh, discussion. Okay, I'm sorry. Learning this new I'll, system. I'll defer um, um, my place in line and, and listen to the motion that you're going to make. Okay. Um, so we um, will entertain a motion now to accept the evaluation. First motion will be to accept the evaluation. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Chris, seconded by Commissioner Kemp um, to accept the evaluation. Now we'll move to comments. Commissioner White. Thank you. Um, Janet, you, you've done an outstanding job as executive director of this agency, and I think that your, your scores are indicative of that. So um, I'd like to make a motion to amend that we include a 4% pay raise for Ms. Doherty as well, um, you know, in line with, with what we've given um, the executives uh, uh, over on the county side. Okay, so well, that, that was um, going to actually like be to... my second motion, but oh. why don't you just restate your yeah, motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll withdraw my <laughs> motion to amend, and, and yeah, and let me withdraw Commissioner my Kemp, motion. Commissioner Kemp, are you okay to withdraw your second until he restates his <clears throat> motion? Okay. okay. All right. Um, I, I make the motion that we accept the report and and provide um, a four percent increase in salary as a reward for an outstanding job well done. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Chris, seconded by Commissioner Kemp, uh, to accept the valuation and give a 4% pay raise. Um, any comments? Commissioner Kemp? Commissioner Kemp. Just quickly, um, excellent, wonderful job. And um, I'm so happy to uh, see the EPC doing so well. And it's just greatly appreciated. Thank you, Commissioners. Commissioner Higginbotham. And I just want to. To, to add and say you had some mighty big shoes to fill and following Dr. Garrity. And I like seeing the, the collegiality and the, the spirit of the staff uh, when they come here uh, in the boardroom and the way they uh, act, conduct themselves in uh, the field. Uh, we don't get complaints. Uh, <coughs> the, and I'm not that we got an unusual amount of complaints, but we <coughs> continue uh, from Dr. Garrity's term uh, to yours to get high praise and, and good remarks from people out that you're working with. So thank you. And, and, and finally, 
uh, you have been an outstanding person, professional, and director, not only in ensuring that we are fulfilling our mission, but in keeping the high levels of professionalism and spirit that, that just fills the organization. This is a large organization. You have a lot of people who work for you. And you have a strong following. You had tremendous shoes to fill. No one ever thought that anyone could step into Dr. Garrity's big shoes. And you certainly have, have put your little feet in there and have done an outstanding <laughs> job. And, and, and the mud is still thick on those shoes from, you know, tromping out in those fields. But, you know, knowing you personally as well as professionally, you are a good person who really loves what you do and values our environment. And what a perfect fit to have you heading up our Environmental Protection Commission. Thank Oops. you, Commissioner, and thank you to all the commissioners. I just want to say um, I do love what I do. Um, I did have big shoes to fill, and I actually consult with him regularly, and he is, those big shoes are sitting in the audience today. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank, I'm just continuing Dr. Garrity's legacy, and it just gets better and better and better. But ultimately, it comes down to our staff. We have very dedicated staff. They're very quick to respond. Um, they love what they do, and it shows in the way that they interact with our customers. So thank you again. I very much appreciate it. And just uh, I'll give, you know, Janet, you and I have been friends for a really long time. I mean, you've, you've helped me in my adventures <laughs> of, of in the legislature, and um, I really, I, when I thought of you for this job, I thought it was just a perfect fit because you know EPC hasn't always had a smooth path. And um, I think that you have really, you're just such a collaborator and you just work with all the different agencies. You work to get solutions. And I think that's the, um, the type of person that really um, is a great leader. Um, for this agency and so you've done a great job and I applaud you. Thank you. So, um, so we have motion by Commissioner Chris, seconded by uh, Commissioner Kemp. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please record your vote. Motion carried five to zero. Okay, moving forward on our agenda. How are you doing? <clears throat> Uh, Commissioner, we're moving into the executive director report. Uh, the first item, I'm going to call on Tom Ash. Uh, we were given instructions to reach out for perhaps some funding for Red Tide and to give you a quick update. So he has a couple of slides. So, Mr. Ash. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Ash, APC staff. Um, very quickly, uh, another Red Tide update for you. Unfortunately, um, not sure when I will not be giving you red tide updates. Uh, it looks like we've had a little bit of a resurgence uh, since Hurricane Michael, and we've had some very mild weather, so unfortunately the, the red tide is persisting. Uh, the latest from FWC um, on this first slide, you can see some very high, uh, some high and medium hits in the mouth of Tampa Bay, and then some lower hits up inside near the Skyway Bridge. Our own monitoring, coupled with the county's uh, code enforcement, marine safety office staff, we are diligently out there every week. And unfortunately, we are still seeing some high hits inside mm -hmm. uh, Tampa Bay and in, uh, well within Hillsborough County waters. <laughs> what I would like to call your attention to is the, uh, the yellow dot there on the left slide uh, with the number 23 on it. That's at the nexus of the main shipping channel into Tampa Bay and Port Manatees Channel. Um, and unfortunately, that is the farthest we have seen um, the red tide coming into the bay thus far. So that is a new point of concern for us. As of just this morning when I was sitting in the audience, I was receiving uh, updates on sampling that code enforcement did just yesterday. And that yellow dot is now an orange dot. So that means it went from a low uh, count to a medium count. So again, we will continue to be diligent keep monitoring, keep providing you updates, and, uh, and hopefully get a, a handle on this. The, um, we were asked at the last meeting about the effects of Hurricane Michael. Um, the Gulf waters uh, out on the Florida shelf were very churned up by Hurricane Michael. We, um, we were blessed by not being 
hit or in the direct path of Michael. However, we did get a lot of rain and we got a lot of wind from, from Michael. That churned up the water on the shelf, which is where the red tide tends to live. And it pushed it up onto the shelf and closer to our coastline. So unfortunately, um, it kind of refreshed the supply of, of red tide cells. And then of course, whenever you get heavy rain, you have a lot of nutrients running off of the land and those nutrients tend to feed the bloom. So that just exacerbated things uh, again. Also, as uh, Ms. Darty mentioned, we were requested to investigate the availability of state and federal funding at our last meeting. And we have, um, I'm here to report that we have done that. We have um, reached out to um, both federal um, sources and state sources of potential funding. Uh, we reached out to uh, Commissioner, or sorry, old habit, Representative <laughs> Castor's office uh, about the possibility of federal funding uh, for our water quality monitoring efforts in the Tampa Bay area. We also hand delivered the, uh, a very similar request to uh, Secretary Noah Valenstein with the uh, FDEP. So both of those folks know we have placeholders in with them. What we have heard thus far is there really isn't any funding to speak of for monitoring. Of course, there was funding for cleanup efforts, but not necessarily for mon monitoring just yet. If that money does become available, uh, rest assured, we will be standing there in line and reminding those folks that we do have placeholders uh, there, uh, hopefully to help reimburse for some of this additional monitoring. And with that, I will take any questions. Okay. I don't see any questions on the monitor, but my screen has gone black here. Does that a lot? Okay. Is there anybody that wants to speak? Seeing none, another good thorough report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Janet. Thank you, Commissioners. To continue with the uh, Executive Director's report, we have a few slides here. Uh, the first slide, EPC and our partners, um, Dr. Haig from the USGS and Dr. Brown from USF, won the Award of Excellence for the Environmental Category at the Planning Commission's 36th Annual Planning and Design Award Ceremony. Award winners were selected for, by a panel of distinguished judges from outside of Hillsborough County. What an honor it was to have the Wetlands Grant Study recognized by this prestigious award. This project demonstrates the quality of hard work that went into this study and is a testament to how successful collaborations can further our efforts to protect our natural resources in a meaningful way. I would like to say a special thank you to the Wetlands staff as well as Sterling Woodard who helped bring this study in for a landing for their contributions to the agency, not just for this study, but every day. The Hillsborough Toastmasters were featured by the Toastmasters <coughs> District 48 for their outstanding program in, no in the November edition of their newsletter. With us today are staff members DeWitt Bruce, who serves as the current president, and Savita Epps, VP of Public Relations. I'd like you to stand today. Thank you so much for your service, guys. Really appreciate it. I would like to commend them and all of our staff for their outstanding job they do for the Hillsborough Toastmasters. In June of this year, they achieved the President's Distinguished Award for the fourth year in a row, and they are well on their way to earning this designation for next year. As a side note, Commissioner Higginbotham, I'd like to thank you personally for Toastmasters. It came to my attention that this was the brainchild of Commissioner Higginbotham. He had conferred, Al had conferred with Dr. Garrity about uh, working on some staff presentations and actually I think in succession planning as well and, and emerging leaders. And from that, the Hillsborough County Club was formed and it is one of the largest and most successful clubs in the state. Thank you, Commissioner. Joan Hallgren and Tony Alhamzi with our Affirmative Action Committee participated in the county's job fair hosted by Commissioner Merman in October. Featured here with Della is Tony Alhamzi. EPC is happy to partner with the county to bring job awareness to our residents and we reached out to about 150 job seekers at this event. And we appreciate uh, you, Commissioner Merman, for continuing us to include us in these job fairs. It's very important. I'm also proud of the efforts of our philanthropic committee. The committee has been busy collecting food and cash donations for Metropolitan Ministries at the Roger P. Stewart Center. 
Pictured here are Sarah Newkirk and Laura Webb with a sampling of some of the items collected at our location. A total of three barrels equivalent to 400 pounds of food were donated to help local families in need for this Thanksgiving. Commissioners, you are all invited to attend our Thanksgiving luncheon today following the EPC meeting, and I hope you will be able to join us. Featured here are Devin and Al, serving at a prior EPC Thanksgiving. Commissioner Higginbotham, we want to give you and Devin our honorary aprons, and Vanna White's going to deliver them to you with some turkeys on them, so that today, so that today you can wear your turkey aprons while you're, ser while you're serving uh, Thanksgiving luncheon with the directors and staff. But I would be remiss not to bid you a fond farewell. We plan to honor your public service this afternoon at that luncheon. You have meant a great deal to EPC and to EPC staff. Uh, you have always been a strong supporter of us, Commissioner, and you were instrumental in protecting the wetlands with your original vote to keep the wetlands division intact. Uh, it was a bold move. We've never forgotten that. Um, I know personally that uh, it cost you politically, but you stuck to your core values and you voted your conscience and protected the environment of Hillsborough County for future generations and the wildlife that lives there. Congrats on your retirement. All the best in life. Please keep in touch. And Dr. G and I will have some more comments this afternoon. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. And if I could just say this morning, I asked someone, I forget who it was, I said, will there be an apron for me? Not knowing that you guys had special aprons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in preparation for my next venture in life, I've taken up cooking and baking and uh, so doing a lot of that, those duties at home and getting ready to, to prepare a meal for my wife and her sister who are going to Atlanta uh, tomorrow. So I'll, I'll wear it today and then this afternoon when I'm at home cooking. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I remember that, that wetlands vote and it was uh, very costly politically, but it was the right thing to do. And uh, I didn't know that anybody remembered that, uh, but uh, it was within the, the first six months, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, my term as the district commissioner that we had to take that step but it's all worked out and I'm proud to to see how it's developed well commissioner we remember it and we'll never forget it and we'll never forget your service thank you Janet thank, thank you very much and to all the staff thank you and with that commissioner um, we will move on to uh, Commissioner Merman and the second part of our agenda today I, oh, we need oh. to bring the um, meeting to a closure and then we reopen. do but I see Commissioner Kemp would like to speak no, uh, Commissioner Chris the, the it'll remain an EPC meeting and through adjournment okay Commissioner Kemp thank you uh, I know Commissioner Higginbotham we already did our farewells but um, and I did write a sentence in there about your uh, wetland protection I was specifically thinking about that. So I didn't, I didn't want to leave this moment without saying I very much remember that mm -hmm. and very much know how important it was. Um, I didn't know any political implications per se, but I'm sure there were. <laughs> and um, not, um, not having been familiar with that end of it, but um, thank you very much because um, that was, uh, I remember those contentious times and that was an important, important vote and legacy. Okay, before we move into the next part of the agenda, um, as my last uh, EPC meeting, uh, I want to say to the current director and the former director who's also here in the audience in the back, thank you for your outstanding commitment. Our environment is crucial to our existence, and sometimes people forget about that. And this agency was created by a group of our predecessors in the legislature led by somebody who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, Terrell Sessoms, and who taught me the ropes in my early days. And the employees of this agency are second to none. You are experts of experts. But you don't do what you do. This isn't a job to you. This is your passion. This is your commitment. This is your legacy in life. And I, for one, have appreciated that in you very, very much. And I have thoroughly enjoyed serving on this board 
and watching the evolution of us growing and fostering and becoming better at and protecting and all the wonderful things that have taken place here. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And um, Dr. G and I really appreciate your serving and especially as our vice chair, but we'll have comments later on in the program for you. But again, we, we wish you the best. And um, it's, it's all strong leadership leads to the policies that we implement. And that comes from you and others on this board. So thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Okay, um, that concludes our agenda for the Environmental Protection Commission today.